Okay, so um, as you've heard, for the past 30 odd years, um, I've protected people all over the world. Now, one of the things that we do in protection is we have to manage the risk to our client to keep them alive. So I'm going to take you through some of the risk management, and I know it's not a really sexy subject, I get that, but some of the risk management that we have to do so that my team can stay alive and more importantly, we can keep our VIP alive. The threat examples we have, um, is it a perceived threat? Is it an actual threat? So are they on Putin's hit list? If they're on Putin's hit list, which happens, then we need to make sure that we're better than Putin's men. Is it a physical threat? Are they being stalked? Are they being blackmailed? So we have to look into their background. We have to find out why they're being uh, blackmailed. And quite often, it's something they have done. And um, that we then have to drill down to try and find the blackmailer so that we can then mitigate that risk, mitigate that sex tape getting out onto the internet or those embarrassing photographs that a member of parliament doesn't want you to see. So that's all about our risk management for that. Um, to do that, we look at historical events, who, what, where, why, when, how and which, the Magnificent Seven, we call it. Uh, we use open source information and we look at um, politically exposed persons and we look at who they're exposed to and why they're exposed to. Now, in this day and age, um, risk, would you believe, is not as bad as it used to be in the old days. When I was a police officer, if you were um, gay in the police force, you were sacked because you were considered a risk. You could be blackmailed. Our head of royalty protection back in 1980 was sacked because it was found he was homosexual and he was open to blackmail by people that might want to hurt the Queen. How times have changed today. Once we've got our principle, one of the things we have to do, we have to know all about them. So their allergies, um, are they on medication? What food will they and won't they eat? And at the local hospital, to wherever they're staying, uh, we have to have a couple of pints of their blood. So that should the worst happen, we've got uh, blood available to us. And I also try and make sure that one of my CP team has the same blood group. Then I've got a mobile blood bank with me. I know, it's, you know, bless them. Um, so <laughs> they, they have to have a lot of skills. You know, please don't think that we're big bulky minders that, you know, walk around with pop stars. That really isn't what close protection operatives are about. We have to have skills as languages, um, to go on to a team, again, depending on what the client does. Does the client ski? Do they jet ski? Do they horse ride? Well, the team's got to be able to do that too. Because whatever the client does, we've got to be able to go with them. As far as clients uh, flying around the world, yeah, again, mostly on private jets. Sometimes you have to go on commercial, so we have to manage that risk. Who's going to be on the plane? Are the press going to be on the plane? How do we keep the press away from our clients? And usually it's by booking loads of seats. If we're on a commercial aircraft, we're probably in first class and we'll probably book first class, all of it. Because that way we know the only people there are us. Um, and then of course you've got them trying to wander in from business class. We had this, um, I was on a Harry Potter tour. I used to look after Joe Rowling in the old days. And we were flying back from Canada. Uh, we're in first class. And all of a sudden, a chat comes through with a video camera from business class. And I'm like, sorry, mate, you can't be in here, off you trot. And he says, oh, yes, yes, I can. You know, I've just been told I can video. No, you can't video in here. And having an argument with somebody at 30,000 feet, he wasn't going to win. But of course, I didn't want to hurt him either. I just <laughs> gently wanted to persuade him to go back to business class, um, which I did eventually. Uh, and then, of course, the purser all got very upset because I'd laid hands on uh, one of their passengers. Uh, but, you know, that was the risk I was willing to take at 30,000 feet. You're not going to come in here and video us, video our clients, because we don't know what you're going to do with it. So that's all about what we do and how our risk, 
how we try and mitigate risk and we try and lower risk. And it's, if you think to yourself, you're a team, I'm sure a lot of you work as a team, we work as a team, slightly different, we rely on each other to keep us, out, keep us alive. You know, all of us have to rely on that. You, I'm sure, work in your team, you have to rely on each other, on the bit of information they're working on that it's correct. Work as a team, because there's nothing, there's nothing greater than teamwork. You know, sort of knowing that you're all, when you've finished your project, you've handed it in, you know, and it's, yay, slap on the back because you've done it well. Because each individual has taken responsibility for their small bit of risk. And as a team, you've pulled it all together.